Hello, welcome to the Risk Grand Novice series where I, a Grandmaster in Top 100, a ranked player on the Free For All ladder, and, and for right now, share a, a uh, novice only game. And uh, from this, hopefully, people will see a game of Risk. Uh, more people will see the game of Risk, and newer players can improve their play. So uh, maybe we'll see some crazy things, and uh, I just want to share about this game that, that you don't have to be number one to have fun. That, that's the main thing I want to remember here. So in the very beginning, we are going to uh, take ourselves out of it. We're going to take ourselves out of the game, take us out of the running, because... I would like to see the game played as as uh, lower levels play it because when we watch uh, most content out there on the game of risk, the players it's from the perspective of a, a really good player frequently playing other really good players. So looking at this game here, we've got uh, global domination, world domination. Uh, Map is classic, setup is auto, turn timer 60 seconds, AI difficulty expert. It is ranked, the card bonus is fixed, the dice rolls are balanced blitz, and the oh, okay. So let's uh let's take ourselves out of the running. Do not want to be here. Want to watch the individuals in their natural habitat? Okay, boom. Black asked me why. Uh, so back to where we were. So alliances are off. The the rank is novice to beginner. It was supposed to be or intended for it to be novice only. And uh, while I was doing test runs of this, uh, I ac I accidentally ranked up to beginner. So um, it is novice to beginner. And uh, so we're looking at the game here. And green. Just hit purple pretty hard down there. Probably just, I'm guessing my thought process is this is a big stack and I want Australia. Let's just remove that. Although if blue or yellow want it or even orange, who is who is uh, looking like orange is considering making a run into this area. Um, it might have been better for green to um, Maybe stack here, take a card somewhere else, and uh, play a little safer because this is often a, a hot zone for for lower level players. Let's let's look at who we have playing. So we have Jeremy playing the flag of Canada. We have uh, Raoul playing the flag of Germany. We have JM flying. Now we're gonna we're gonna look up what flag this is because because I watch people who. Uh, Who uh, do do uh, make risk content and, and um, I wish they would they would do the flag. Uh, so it looks like this is the flag of Colombia. J M. George George Zeiss. Red white red flag. So flying the flag of. Austria, it seems. And Joseph, I believe that is the flag of Sweden. So. Oh. We are back here. It is our turn. Black still does not understand why we do such a thing. That is okay. 
it it really doesn't make sense unless you knew already what I was doing. So, okay, what what have we missed? Uh, so red has taken South America. Green is gearing up to take Australia, and I think this this taking a card stacking here. Um, what it says is I'm not going to lose troops here here. I am going to give orange green is saying this i'm going to give orange a chance to make a decision on how he wants to approach the continent he takes and and he goes with us hitting the the green three and pushing more towards australia if i was green and i had thought about it i might have taken this three added a one to it gone down uh to this and fortified the seven um then you're not risking that three being hit. You're getting it out of the way. So we see purple hit red. Purple saying you don't get a continent. Catching up. It looks like it was a uh, before. And uh, without purple having a continent, I'm mixed on this play. So it says nobody gets a continent. But we're both going to be weaker now because we did that when I think taking the risk that red doesn't stop you from taking Africa. You can just push through, you take Africa, you put those those troops you just put towards red, go through here and then fortify here. Or if you don't trust fortify here, um, but red does have little little islands, little territories spread throughout where they may choose to uh, poke in and, and stop you from getting a territory, uh, a continental bonus for a round. So. Black having a laugh probably does seem silly. Probably looks like I have no clue what I'm doing. Um, which in the game of Risk is not true. Um, but maybe in the... Uh, uh, this realm that we're in right now, which is which is uh, life, or also talking over the game of risk, that we're relatively new to that. So I don't agree with the multiple attacks here. Green took a less than hundred percent roll to attack down. I think it would have been better to take a uh, hundred percent roll with this four. Maybe work your way down. You have a bigger number here. So, orange just attacks green in a way you probably shouldn't. <laughs> in a silly way. Um, purple is still trying to say you can't have South America um, when purple could have by now had Africa with an equal guard to red in South America with a long term plus one per turn troop advantage. But now they don't have Africa. Or, yeah, so purple now doesn't have Africa. Red will not trust purple. Red has these little these little territories sprinkled throughout that can always break it again. You know, th there is ill will between these individuals now it is is very likely. Um. If I am red right now, and I have a trade, it doesn't look like red does. Uh, so, with no trade, um, I say slow roll down. Try to fortify to give purple a continuously hard time, because you're probably losing this pretty soon. Um, looks like Europe is going to go to black. So, let's, uh, let's end this. And, uh... So Europe is looking like it's going to go to black unless purple wants to play board police. Um, orange has ruined the game for themselves. Uh, red or green has a trade, may be able to even come back. Uh, there was a world where green could have eliminated orange at this point. You put four here your rest here and you attack through there. I, I think there's a, a very good chance that 
Orange would have been eliminated. So now Orange is going to get a chance to add a few more troops. Maybe eliminate me. Um, and Orange should, should feel pretty good about that. Um, because it's probably better to get uh, fifth than to get sixth losing in placement to someone who did not make one successful attack, which would be me. So here's green, hopefully attacking down. Okay, good. <laughs> so we're now going to spectate, um, which was which was the which was a big goal of this. <laughs> um, if we could just put in a spectator mode in the game where you can spectate people's games, uh, um, that would be great. But to give us a little, you know, we're, we're going for this little insight on uh, how players at this level play, and this is how we're going to get it. Um, so purple is continuing to say to red, we have beef. Um, at this point, Purple can't press red. Oh, it looks like orange is going to be eliminated uh, right after. So at this point, purple can't trust red. Red can't trust purple. If, if I was playing either of these, if I were to step in and start playing as them, um, I would not trust the other. So black's going to take Europe. Black has shown with communication that they know at least the basics of the game with uh, the, the talking thing, why? Uh, and they were putting a light guard, uh, or, or no, not light guard, a threat stack in the middle while they were taking it. And now they're doing a two point guard saying nobody gets NA and don't break me or I will attack you. So can purple and red put their differences aside and uh, not eventually lose to people who have more powerful continents. Or at least continents with, with higher uh, true bonuses. So it looks like Red is going to play board police. He's going to say, uh, Purple didn't let me have mine. And you're not going to get yours because we, we honestly don't know if purple was going to break black and very scary, the situation. Um, so green's going to fortify in. He's going to start protecting his Australia. So I like where green is because there is so much beef here. There is, oh no. No. Oh. Oh my gosh. The sirens are. I liked where green was. <laughs> Purple could have. Purple could have done so much there, and they chose to do that. So, this is the point where I'm going to start checking. You know, I might start checking flags. So, and see if we might. No, the Austria and the, the Sweden individual are not uh, both still in the game. So I would, you know, it wouldn't make sense to accuse them of, of collaboration right now. Um, so that was something I was trying to stay aware of. Is at the start of the game, they both joined like, at the same time. And uh, so... I think red's gonna make the good move take south america what this is gonna do is it's gonna put it on purple to break black if purple doesn't break black then black is is gonna fortify i would assume that area is gonna fortify western europe and purple may never break through. I think this was... I think purple's hurting themselves by not having just taken this continent several turns ago, and then, then reinvesting those troops into attacking others. 
you know, making yourself weak. Oh, wow. <laughs> making yourself weak to stop others from getting strong is rarely the game plan. See, black right now could like break purple and black right now with a trade could kill purple even. So it is a uh, purple in, in red. I think red is very unlikely to let purple hold Africa. It is just, it is bad news. So we'll see what black chooses to do. I think if I'm black, I put that light guard or that, that I guess it's a medium guard at this point, or even at, at these troop levels, it's a heavy guard. I think I put that guard here in Western Europe and don't give red or purple or even or even green although i don't i wouldn't predict that a chance to uh to break your year up because right now you very high in the game uh troop totals for black relative to the other players red should do it red should break purple uh unless they intend to work together to take on black Looks like red is making a decision on how to fortify. So I disagree with that. What this does is it locks this stack in. So let's say something crazy happens and this is left open. Uh, meaning he has to, he black has to fortify away. You might be able to come in, say something about that. Just just having that 11, having access is is a good thing. If he's worried about Black taking an 11 here as a threat and then hitting it, and then him not even having a, as strong of a chance for even second place, I could see that. It's possible Black is about to take North America and nobody's going to say anything about it because uh, Black is, is by far the strongest and he has at this point uh, almost... Right, right on the the precipice of breaking the balance of the game in uh, black's favor, and breaking the balance of the game is when you have more troops than all other players combined, um, and you're able to win uh, if if played correctly. So I don't. We're not at that point yet. But if nobody does anything to black, uh. It's not looking good. So, and at this point, black has a 33 pointed at red. So red didn't say anything to purple. Red didn't say anything to black about the bonuses they had. And now 33 is pointed at red. When red had a red had a pretty good shot for second place. Um, and now probably upsetting black. It's not going to happen. So I like this fortify away from the 33. It, uh, depending on how purple plays it, purple may actually make it so this 33 can't swing through if purple puts troops here. So this may result in red surviving another turn and then red will have a five trade. But if I'm black, you're going to put a lot into getting this for the five trade. Uh, the five cards, five cards for the trade. So purple, once again, that's a problem with green. And whenever two individuals have a problem with each other, that seems unprovoked. It seems like it doesn't make sense. You maybe suspect collaboration. But when two players have a problem with each other and it seems unprovoked it seems out of nowhere it might just be low level players <laughs> so uh it looks like black might be guarding the kill on red if red if red opens up that 33 where the 33 can then break through it now red's 33 um we may say red eventually picked apart and then black gets to say uh end 
say uh say what happens to red by by having only red right here and black around but looks like red is smart enough to not open up the 33 which uh good for red i think if you're green that is an option i think it is a way of saying you don't get to bully me anymore um and at this point purple has really no chance if purple pulls it back it would be amazing so can't understand why purple has attacked red and green like this um and we're not going to try to understand why we're just going to see if purple continues to do it so if i'm green how do i pull this game back uh if i'm green i probably don't but <laughs> no that's not true so the green is green what's green need to do green is green this game at least so oh man Right now, I think green may have to keep defending Australia, hope that black and red have a conflict in such a way that you're able to get strong enough and uh, join, join the conflict. Uh, but you have to deal with purple at this point because if you would have to guess that Purple has a trade on three, it's going into me, you know, if you're green, based on what you've seen so far. Black is securing South America the bonus, and is saying nobody gets Africa, nobody gets North America, and nobody's really going towards EU, uh, I shouldn't say EU, I should say Europe, and uh, Asia, nobody's going for those things. So green is the safest one from black and purple. Purple doesn't doesn't want to see anybody have an easy win. It looks like because purple takes a dendrade and does a 13 on 23 and it's pretty good rolls. So I would say it's uh, it's interesting how it's going so far, and I black should have just got rid of purple. Purple is gonna be cards right now, but removing that variation from the game when variation right now luck is not what's gonna win you the game right now. Uh, in the position that black is in. Black does not need to hope for luck, or at least at a certain point in this game, Black did not need to hope for luck to not lose. Uh, and even if luck could help, it didn't seem like it was necessary for Black at that moment. So uh, if Red is taking out Purple, I don't think that's the correct choice because that variation that Purple throws in the game is going to benefit Red. So, red breaks Europe. Okay. I think it's a good choice. I also think breaking South America is a good choice right here. Not opening up the 35, just breaking South America. So, right now, the game does have some balance to it. Um, green. And black, if you thought the state of the game continued, but for a very long time, green and black uh, will, would eventually overcome red and purple if played correctly. If you're green right now, smacking purple to feed the kill, also an option. Uh, purple at this moment with no cards is not a threat. I do not like trapping the 23 right here. I don't like that. Because if things start going on where 20 stack of 23 could help you, uh, 
it's not going to work. Now, maybe green was thinking purple was going to open up the 23. Purple did not. The green could have been thinking that. Let's see what black chooses to do. I think black could not take NA. I think it doesn't look like black is going to take NA in North America. So if I'm black, what I probably do is. I mean, it looks like black. Maybe considered taking purple out, then didn't have enough time. This 35, I was going to say, yes, create a big stack. Now, I would have probably instead moved my 30 something stack here. Way of saying the purple, that's not going to work. You're about to die. And if nobody does anything to purple, you get to take purple out that next turn. You're going to pull uh, two cards. You might after the value of those cards come out even. But I really like removing that variation. Um, if I'm the black player, removing per the variation of purple. So. Green's going to take a card and pass. And let's see what he chooses to do. Moves his stack back to Siam. So I hope so badly Black does not smash in to Australia. And I also hope for for my own sake that Purple does not actually pull back this one, which would be incredible. Good for Purple. I would just feel a little silly because <laughs> That purple was at one point nine or seven troops or something like that versus two others who had 40 plus. Maybe all the, like the combined troop total of the others was. You know, over 10 times more. So black's going to trade in. Black and red have thumb beef that I'm not aware of why. Uh, and looks like black is maybe just taking territories, trying to stay over 12. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, <laughs> no. OK, black's games. <laughs> Red's game is ruined. Uh, but we thought Purple's game was ruined too, and he, he Purple holds two continents. So Black Black could have completely taken out uh, Red. I think with the right, even if it was one turn longer setup. Although then Red would have had that trade. Um, it's also the possibility with the amount of cards Red had, which was three, they would have waited to trade. Um, but. <laughs> This is very real. And uh, <laughs> green is now in the lead troop count wise. Green is now in the lead income wise, even if it's just two troops a turn over black, who has 13 territories and green has 13 territories. Oh, I think purple could have taken South America back there. Purple chooses not to take South America back there, which would have been a good choice because green stack was trapped and purple's not lining. Black's not lining up on purple. Oh my God. Okay, black is going to continue hitting red. Oh. And don't do it, black. Don't smash into green. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't even leave your stack there. I'm okay, okay. It looks like black might be opening up green. Black is saying no. Is he going to try for 18 territories for the bonus troop? No. Okay. Well, I don't know what black intended to do, but, bl but what black did do is open up green. Now, green because of these troops blocking right here, unless a trade comes through. 
cannot take out purple. So what can green do? Uh, if I'm green, take two cards and pass. You're going to drop... Uh, black below, 15 troops. And you're seeing what everybody else is going to choose to do on that next round of turns because you've got the four cards. These two individuals have three cards, but we don't know what they'll do with them. We don't know. If I'm purple, <laughs> if I'm purple, I take Africa. I say to the world, let me take this bonus. I'm not a threat. I put a guard right here in North Africa. I hope green doesn't come through and break, but I understand if green does take it again, come through break. We, we would try and find some level of consistency where we, we'd set a baseline with the other individuals we're playing with. And this baseline would say, I think purple bought it out. These individuals would say, okay, this guy's variation in play. He wants this continent. He's not going crazy. He's not going to techno nowhere. I understand the threat he is. Not that this individual isn't the threat, but I think I understand that threat and how to work with that threat. If Purple came in and just said, hey, Africa's mine. Okay, so now we need to go back into the bot settings. So the bot settings are... Uh, let's look for this. Let's look for this. It's expert difficulty automated behavior so there's a very real possibility not only does purple win when i said i, I don't think purple has a chance that purple does it uh, as a bot which um oh don't okay black does, has not bought it but purple does it as a bot which would be would add a, a layer of of humor to it so Let's confirm that purple did bot out. It looks like because you're defeated, better luck next time. So. Let's see what happens. Let's see what red chooses to do. Really black. Great communication beginning kind of displaying uh, at this level that that black understands the uh, the, ch the the predetermined chat options. Um <laughs> And uh, it might sound silly, but that is a little bit of an indicator of um, game sense. To understand the game well enough to make comments that are relevant to what's going on, like not understanding why I'm just laying out all my troops into everybody else with a 0% chance of winning a roll. So. Black. Chooses not to take South America, or Green chooses not to take South America. I think that was incorrect because, or not incorrect, but not 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 what Green should have done. Because say Black takes Europe, or even Black takes out Red. Um, I think the trade Black would pull from taking out Red wouldn't would put you even with green. But green would have an even greater advantage taking this and putting the onus on black to make a move. Watch, nothing's going to happen here. Green could have had two bonus troops. But green doesn't. Because green didn't. So what does black do? This black take Europe and hold, which is a bad idea because there's a bot right here and it'll break this continent. Does black take out red? Yes. It looks like black does take out red. Okay. Now taking out red and holding North America. Not a bad choice. The bot's not going to come all the way up there. Uh, but... There's going to be that 14 here that can break North America. There's just going to be this 29 here that can break North America. The only option really here is, I think, to clear out green from this area. This is now green's game to lose, which 
after being hit so hard, seemingly unprovoked several times, uh, I would say is, is a good position for green to be in. So we'll see what green chooses to do. I think if I'm green, definitely break your up. That's not a question. Uh, taking one more territory, maybe two more. Oh, I don't like that. But taking several territories says, uh, taking several more territories is going to get that troop bonus um, from having 18 or 21 territories. So what's green going to choose to do? If green wanted to, green could take that. Stack, slam 27, take the 14, slam 27. Uh, I think in that world, there's a possibility the bot takes out both of them, but there's a chance it doesn't. And green can pull it back, but, but black would be too far gone at that point, I think. So, look what green did. Green did not open up that 27 stack. I might have liked to leave some troops right here, although I think green is expecting Europe to be broken by the bot. So maybe not. Um, but if this 27 stack is going to do anything, this upcoming turn, it's going to have to blast through 14. Uh, it's not happening. I think this could be a game that the bot wins. I hope that uh, that maybe these players can come together and say first and second for us, third for the bot. But this moment it wouldn't surprise me if Black put their whole sack here and smashed that. It just, it just would not surprise me. Okay, what's Black doing? Black, I suggest you take South America. You're going to take a chunk out of green. Okay, you're going to hold a two per turn bonus. Even, that's, stop. Stop right there. Okay. Now Black is in a position where they are equal uh in bonus with green not including troops but even including or not including territory count but even including territory count bonus with green green is gonna have a chance to break this but they were prior to this turn and trade-in of greens equal in troops so there is a world where black turns around gets a trade-in and is similar in troop count although at this point Black losing that, or green losing that roll on the bot. No, let's see. Black, black losing five troops on the bot. When that bot was, I think, a good barrier. It could be argued a good barrier between direct attacks from here um, to here, which were the two continents being held. So at this point, the game is close to breaking in Green's favor now. Um, this North America or this this Australia hold is not. It, it's known by the community for a reason. It's talked about for a reason. Uh, holding Australia, which is a bonus that you can hold uh, with one single stack. It is, it is a prize bonus to hold, and uh, it's a very real possibility that we see green continue to hold it. I, I think black could have something to say here, and that wouldn't be a bad idea. Do it, black. No. No. Okay. Come on, black. You should have swung around and smacked this. Okay. Okay. Black is going to maybe retake South America. No, Black is going to do nothing more than what Black has already done, which is put themselves in 
uh, long-term troop gain at a disadvantage over green. So state of the game continues. Imagining that who wins this battle? Green wins this battle. Okay, green just doing one hit. I don't think green needs to fortify back to the 16. Honestly, I think, yeah, I think, I think taking that out, making those troops active, if even in a small way, which is lining up to hit this three, is better than um, making this a big stack when no one has the ability to break through this right now. There's a possibility that this 14 comes up comes through, hits this, but it's just, it's unlikely. It's, and, uh, it would put Black's game in, in jeopardy completely. So, this bot, 17 troops, but we can't count them out. We learned that recently. You can't count this bot out. So, you can't count purple out, at least. So, see what black chooses to do. I think if I'm black, maybe you turtle. Maybe maybe you go for a three-point guard here. Because right now, if, if you can even take... If you can get even on troop count, and then go for the luck of the bot, which in this position here, I think, is not going to be in your favor. Uh, you could try that. And uh, and maybe eventually take NA, and at that point, Green's not holding it. Asia, it's not going to happen, and you have a higher troop count than uh, you would eventually in the long term. You'd have more bonus, and you have a higher troop count, and you'd be able to take overtake Green. But this, they call it no Africa, no win. Um, we'll see what. Uh, if that holds true. It's, it's a mentality, a strategy, for some a way of life, for some way to start every game they play. Um, you know, even in on maps where there is no Africa, people are looking for it. I don't know, I don't know if that's true or not, but um, it looks bad for black. It looks good for green, and uh, if played correctly, I think we see green pull the W. Notice this stack here could not attack this 15. Not that I recommend it. I would not recommend that, but it couldn't attack the 15. Uh, and that 15 is, because this, this territory here would have blocked black from going through itself, can't happen and then this black or this green 15 could break in a which uh means north america is a no-go for play right now and uh south america is about to be broken if i had uh if i had money and i gambled uh <laughs> it would be going there it'd be going in into the the fund that That says that places bets on black being broken. And in fact, at this moment, black could be taken out of the game. So it looks like green has not recognized that. I think if you're black right now, honestly, you take out take out black unless you think black is going to be. Come on. Come on, hit that 11. Basic, hitting that 11 basically says to Black, you're not coming back. Even even take out that 11 and then fortify back to your 16, but don't trap yourself by attacking here. And don't... Don't double trap yourself by going back. This is... If, if Black has a trade right now, smack. Black has a trade right now, Black could say to green, good game, the bot wins now. Man. We'll see. 
purple bot. An expert. You know, no one in here is supposed to be rated higher than beginner. Ranked higher than beginner, so... Um... See if... Yeah, I think if we, we slide an expert into here, an actual expert, you know, not to discount the bot's rank. Uh, you know, I, some might argue that it's actually just the bot's difficulty, but I'd argue that that bot has earned the rank too. Um, <laughs> uh, and you will respect that bot as an expert, whatever, whatever comes with that. Okay, green. Blue is saying, I'm going to play conservative. I'm going to just, you know, take one territory for the card, move forward. Do you hit black? Do you hit black? Yes. Yes. Boom. Okay. Black has four troops. Four. Three troops. Three territories. Two troops. Two territories. But four cards. So green is going to line up to kill black. Is purple going to kill black? Is black going to get the trade? And then turn around and either play conservatively or hit green. Uh, if black really wanted to, I suppose they could start pushing through the green bot, uh, work with black to kill the green bot. Black's going to say, well played. Uh, uh, or. Purple bot. I was saying green bot. Black could work with green and guarantee a second place. Okay. I think that's a possibility. I don't know if green would pick up on that, but green might find a kill on purple juicier if you put it in the right situation. Uh, so. The trade. The, the tin trade. Do we have bonus troops with that too? No. The tin trade. Okay. Slow rolling. Okay. Slow rolling says to me, not a novice, not a beginner. Slow rolling says, uh, even though, slow rolling says, I understand that conceptually, uh, even if it's not being used correctly right now, which I don't think it is. Um, you could also be saying, I understand I lost the game, uh, good luck with the bot, I'm trying to help you out, some. Could also be saying, I'm gonna take my sweet time, and you'll wait an extra 40 seconds to kill me. See what green chooses to do. Okay, green, or, well, good job green and, and black. Uh, to you, I would have tried to hold Europe earlier in the game for longer. Um, okay. So, if played correctly, green wins. Played correctly. Blue's not going to, uh, purple bot is not going to have a trade on three. Uh, they're going to get what? Three, four, five? Uh troops at this point he keeps attacking now purple's gonna get you know four troops let's see if this 15 will come out i think he should i think uh green should have brought the 15 out um we're gonna have a light guard on south america and no guard on europe and no guard on north america but against the bot it's unlikely it, it makes all of those moves. And in the long term, uh, green's on, in the short term, green's on five cards. Green's got four bonuses. It's going to hold at least one. 28 territories, 27 territories. And uh, in the long term, uh, the, the income would be too much for the bot unless green, unless green started doing what I did at the beginning. <laughs> so... We should see green holding Africa, 
You know, at one point, several people were in there. But at the end of it all, Green comes in, says, it's mine. Uh, Africa has been, has been a story. Uh, has had a lot of people come through it this this game um and uh, the most uh, the most uh consistently and longest held bonus in this game which i do not think is uncommon and probably very much not uncommon at this skill level um so i like green coming through i'd like to see green pull this here and four or five bit right here. Just put this three there. Um, Green's not fast enough to end the game right now. Green oddly blocks the 15 from doing any more than just these two. Shouldn't be an issue. I'd like to see the bot pull out a good game, <laughs> you know, and, and a well played. So, at the end of it all, it looks like JM from, we were saying, Columbia. Try to confirm that. I don't have that tab open anymore. Uh, let me see. From Columbia. JM from Columbia is going to be the first Risk Grand Novice Series winner. I want to uh, say that I think... Uh, Black played at a, or at least had the mechanics of someone higher than a beginner. Uh, good game to green. Good job. Uh, good job, JM, for uh, flying the flag of Columbia. So, let's see what everybody was at. Black was a novice. Okay. Okay. So. And honestly, the bot taking over for for uh, Joseph was a uh, was an upgrade, but that's okay. That's okay because really, if you remember, uh, we want to see newer players out there playing the game. We want to give them tips to improve. Uh, we want to encourage new players. We want to encourage all levels of play. Uh, it adds variation. It adds fun to the game. I um, hope that seeing players at this skill level uh, play will encourage others to, to hop on. And, and, uh, and you have to remember that, and we saw some crazy plays. I said we might, and we did. Um, so just remember that you don't have to be, uh, you don't have to be number one to have fun. You know, you can get on, you can play risk, and, uh, and you can even get better too, but you don't have to. You don't have to. So uh, that is all for this video, and thanks for, for watching.